All right, so let's talk about the ultimate 4K editing and color grading machine. Now, those of you who follow me on the Facebook and other social media platform, I did a couple posts before I was building this whole setup, basically talking about that I'm building a computer, and many of you wanted to know exactly what kind of components do I put and the performance of this build. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to build ultimate 4K editing and color grading computer relatively on actual budget. For my build, I chose AMD Threadripper 2 2950X. And basically the reason why I chose this processor over Intel, for example, that this 899 processor is basically, as of right now, the best bang for the buck price versus performance you can get. And this is actually 16 core. So it's relatively very good deal, especially if you do like editing, color grading, and it's actually going to be a very solid processor for 3D graphics. Next one goes motherboard. I basically picked this one, X399 for AMD. Um, it's a gaming motherboard, but like I constantly been saying in, in many of my videos, I personally been building gaming computers for work and they've been giving me phenomenal performance. So if you guys thinking that if you do editing or color grading or anything like that, you need to buy Xeon or some kind of special motherboard, that is not true. The gaming components for editing and other work related stuff are the best components to choose from. Even though Xeon may be a little bit more powerful than those, you know, server type dedicated motherboards, whatever, they often don't really offer that much increase of performance. And for example, the professional motherboards and the processor cost several thousand dollars, for which you actually don't see any kind of performance increase. So for my build, I always go for the gaming. And again, I'm not advertising. You can pick whatever you want if you're building your own computer. Um, this was random pick, actually. Initially, I wanted to uh, buy a different motherboard. But the motherboard that I wanted to buy, everybody sold out. So I didn't want it to wait too long. I ended up getting this one, which actually works pretty well. Same chipset, so that's technically really what matters. Next one, RAM. We'll see. Uh, this one, not necessary. I kind of spoiled myself a little bit with this one. It's a RGB RAM. It, you know, glows in the dark and all that. It looks pretty cool. Um, when you're building a computer... Do not spend money on frequency of your RAM more than what your processor supports. And even though technically you can allow to run at a higher frequency, I don't recommend it because running more than what your processor can support actually can lead to the errors. So if you want to have stable system, look it up what your processor supports, check out if the motherboard supports that speed, and basically get yourself RAM that runs at that speed. You don't really need to do overclocking and do any kinds of crazy speeds because nowadays RAM is very fast and realistically there is no reason to overclock this thing so they all work pretty well. Alright, storage. For the storage I picked two of these guys, uh, 512 gigabytes Samsung Evo. Um, Tremendous drives. They basically give you like 3.5 gigabytes a second uh, performance. Very happy with them. Uh, I just edited a little music video with a red 6K footage and it just blazing through it. Very happy. Uh, I never been personally a fan of doing like any kinds of RAID setups. Again, for the work that I do, uh, I mostly do music videos and relatively shorter projects. I don't have, you know, any big 60, 70, 80 terabyte projects that I mostly do. So it works in my case for my workflow very well. They're actually very cheap now. I picked up those on the Amazon for $120 a piece. And all the components link in the description below guys. Um, just so you can look around and see what, what you want, whatever. Um, but I think $120 for 512 gigabytes of this kind of performance is really a steal. So, highly recommend. So, the next one goes graphic card. Uh, GTX 1080 Ti is my choice. If you find a good deal or somebody going to be selling used whatnot for a good price, I probably would recommend getting 1080 Ti over 2080. However, obviously the latest is better. If you find great deal, why not? And finally, for my power supply, ah, 
all the stuff, put it here. For my power supply, 850 watt, uh, pretty solid. Most of the components that I use in this computer don't require really too much power. However, if you're thinking of putting more than one graphic card, I probably would go for a thousand. I always been single graphic card user, so to me it doesn't make sense to buy more than what I'm going to use. Um, so 850 is my choice. Now let's go jump in the Windows, and I'm going to run a few benchmarks, and I'm going to show you how this computer handles uh, 4K and possibly 6K videos. Alright, so I'm by my computer now, and we're basically going to test multiple file formats right now. H.264, Blackmagic ProRes, and a bunch of red footage that you can download from the red.com as the sample. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it like a basic grade, it's not going to be anything good, just a random action of whatever. And we're going to play it back, and we're going to render those files, and we're actually going to see how this system keeps up with the fast formats. So let's jump in. All right, so here we are, and I'm just gonna do a random, random actions without basically really having any kind of thoughts behind it. Basically, what I'm trying to do is replicate what average person would do color grading wise. And in my experience, it's something around 10 notes, because I don't think normal people, which majority of people, really color grade more than 10 notes unless it's like some kind of blockbuster like high-end commercial so let's give it a try all right so that's about yep that's about 10 11 notes and i'm gonna apply basically all those notes to the rest of the footage and we're gonna play it back and see how it goes <clears throat> all right so here's all my stuff and right now by the way we're in 1080p timeline okay that's it i just apply it let's play it back let me turn off the volume really quick all right, let's play it back, and we're getting 24p playback. Okay, let's do next clip. This is a uh, red, I believe, 6k, but we're gonna change the timeline right now and find out. Okay, again, playback is normal. More red, very good. 24, 24. Okay, let's see something. Okay, that's ProRes. Again, 24. So it looks like it's playing pretty good. So let's go to 4K now and see if this actually handles 4K in real time. Okay, let's change the project into, let's see if they have preset for 4K, all right. And let's try the same thing, all right. 24, Okay, 24, and by the way, this first clip is almost 30 minutes long. Okay, this one, 24. Let's see the other one, 24. Okay, 27, there we go, it actually starts even higher. Okay, so I think we actually pretty clear over here that we're getting real-time playback. What about the 8K? <clears throat> Let me switch to 8K and see. So now I'm gonna do 8K timeline. Okay, even though some of those files not 8K, however, some of those files are native 6K, so that shouldn't be a problem to kind of see the performance. Again, this is not by any means any kind of scientific test, it's just quick example to see if the, the system handles everything. Alright, so we're at the 8K now, okay, and we can see at the 8K, we're getting about 17 frames a second. So system taking a little bit of hit. Okay, let's do next clip. Okay, about 17, very interesting. What about Blackmagic, which originally 1080p? Okay, that's also taking hit, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, it looks like this thing is struggling. All right, so that's pretty good. I I say, you know, 8K, it's still not there. Probably if I put another uh, 1080 Ti, I think we can do a real-time 8K playback as well because those uh, Evo drives, they're really fast, and they're definitely helping a lot of performance. All right, so let's do rendering now. The first file I'm going to do 
is H.264 and the reason why I'm doing H.264 because it's still one of the most popular formats and that way you guys can also check it out. So I guess let's start with the 8K timeline and not to be too clever let's do from here until some of the red over here. Uh, not too, okay so this one doesn't seem to be supporting it so let's go down to to 7k and see if this one can handle 7k okay desktop again let's do 7k all right doesn't ha doesn't handle 7k as well I guess let's go down to 4K in that case, okay, 4K DCI, okay, save again, desktop, let me remove this thing, alright, so, it looks like it handles 4K, <clears throat> and with the 4K, we are getting 3637 on the 1080p files, Let's see. And we're getting about 50 80% CPU usage and about 20% graphic card. And the red we're getting about 15, 14, 13, 13 and a half. I'd say pretty mediocre. Okay, right now the processor runs at 70 and graphic card runs at 25. All right, that's fine. Now let's see what's gonna happen if we're gonna switch to actual GPU rendering, which is essentially that's what Blackmagic needs to be all about. Okay, so encoder instead of native, we're gonna do NVIDIA. Okay, we're gonna replace the file and let's see if there's any difference. All right, we're getting huge difference. We're getting actually 54, 55 frames and now we have 15% load on the processor and about 50% load on the actual graphic card. And for the red files, we're getting about 25, 24 frames, which is really good. Okay, 55. That's, that's very good for the 4K. All right, and now let's do... All right and let's see so 40 frames a second at 4k pretty good that that's by the way 1080p file let's see how it's gonna handle uh, red files 27 26 not bad actually I'd say it's pretty fast considering you know about 10 11 nodes 31 again, let's see more 40, that's very good. So relatively I think for a little bit more than $2,000 I think this system handles everything really really good. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, all the stuff that I used in my build in the description below so you guys can check it out. And next week uh, coming back to color grading videos. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'm going to see you soon. Leave the comments below.